Today we've got a really cool little project. We're making a little collectibles cabinet. So if you know anybody who collects golf balls or transistor radios or maybe shop parts like I've put in here just for display, we're going to be making this great little cabinet with some clear plastic shelves in it with plexi uh, and a little light up at top. I don't know if I can get it on because it's too bright in here. Um, but in the dimly lit room this little light will go on when somebody gets close because it's got a motion sensor in it. So stick around see how we make this little collector's cabinet. Before we get started cutting wood, let's talk about joints for a second. There's a few options that we could use for joints. We could use a simple rabbit joint and that is uh, a very good alternative. There's lots of gluing area on a, a joint like this. That's what I like about this kind of a joint. Um, we could also use, like we used on our library cabinet, we could also use, like I used on my router bit cabinet, but in our case the nice folks at Dalmax have sent, the, sent us this little uh, I guess it's kind of like a little prototype tool um, to just to review for them and this allows us to do a 45 degree joint. Now for picture frames it would be ideal but we're not making picture frames right now so we're going to use that and do a 45 degree joint that will be put together with dowels. So something we haven't tried before so looking forward to trying something new. We've set our fence distance and we've already preset the blade so that it's a half tooth above the material to give us an optimum cut. I'm just going to trim some of these longer pieces on the sliding miter just to make them a little bit easier to work with when I go back to the table saw. Now we're going to cut the 45 degree angle cuts now and some of you are going to say why didn't you just do it on the sliding miter and the answer is just because I feel more comfortable doing it on here, I, I think I can get a, at least a good, as good a cut on my table saw as I can on my sliding miter. So just a preference for, my, for what I want to do. Now, what I want to do first of all is I want to check the miter gauge to make sure that it's absolutely square. We never square it to the blade. Everything on a table saw is squared to the miter slots. The miter slots are parallel, so the blade needs to be parallel to the miter slots. And in this case, the, my miter gauge wants to be absolutely perfect. There we go. The secret when you're making 45 degree angle cuts like this is not that the angle needs to be exactly 45 degrees. That's not really a secret. The secret is that all of the sides need to be exactly uniform. So the two top pieces need to be exactly the same length and the two side pieces need to be exactly the same length. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my picture framing uh, device, my picture framing jig that I've made and I'm going to use that to make sure my pieces are exactly the right length. Now I'm going to cut the two 14 inch and it doesn't matter if they're absolutely perfect at 14 inches as long as they're both exactly the same. So I'm going to measure at 14 inches from the inside of that tooth and there's my slider right there and that looks pretty good right there. And now I'm going to clamp that.
Now before we cut the 16s, let's have a quick look at these and see I just wound the table saw blade down because I wanted to just check and make sure that all the joints are nice and tight. And they look On our cabinet we're going to use something called a cleat system. Some people call it a French cleat and basically it's a piece of wood like this with a 45 degree angle on it and of course it'll go all the way across the top and just down a couple inches or so on the side. And it will pair up to another 45 degree angle like that and that will be this part here of course will be mounted on the wall you will drill nails through from the underside here Okay, we're ready to start cutting some dowels and the reason I wanted to cut the rabbit in the end is so that it always will orientate me to that this is the front of the little cabinet. So what I want to do is just line up the jig just like that. Because there's this prototype doesn't have a way of clamping, I'm going to manually clamp that and make sure it's nice and secure. So we've clamped that it's nice and secure on there. I've already double checked to make sure that the bit won't penetrate the 45 degree cut too deep. And we can go ahead, I'm going to make three doweling uh, holes with this. There we go. Now I'm just going to carry on and do all of the other sides the same way and because I know now where the front is I can orientate this. In this case it's going to be on this side. And I'm just going to carry on and do all of the sides exactly the same way. The reason I stopped after the second cut and put this sacrificial board in here was so that I wouldn't get tear out in the end and you can see how nice and crisp that is so we'll do that again on our second set of cuts. So there's our two dado cuts and that plastic fits in there nice and snug it's just perfect it's yeah that's great. Okay, now we're going to do some pre-finishing before we glue all the pieces together here. There's our primary components. There's the two sides and the top and the bottom. And I'm using a, a walnut die on this and I want to pre-color this before I assemble it. And I purposely picked something that was very, very dark because I want what's inside the cabinet to stand out. So I'm just going to go ahead and dye all of these pieces and I'm not going to make you sit through all of this process of dyeing but you'll get a chance to see a little bit of what it looks like at least at the beginning. Our pieces are all dry so it's time to do some assembly and I've the dowels that I'm using are, are far too long for this so I've had to cut a whole bunch of them in half uh, and that works good and now all I need to do is basically I'm just going to fill the holes with a little bit of glue 
and put the dowels in and just start putting them together. I don't think I'm even going to bother with the edge grain because it doesn't hold that well anyway. It doesn't seem deep enough. I've pre-cut the wood, and these are the rails, these are the styles, and we always cut the rails first. So the first thing I need to do is to change this bit because it's the wrong bit in there. And of course we always unplug whenever we're changing bits. Okay. Okay, the first one went in nicely. Let's make sure the second one does too. Nice tight fit. There we go. Now we're going to clean up those edges. We're just going to hit those with a torch. Too long. Just want to take it back to clear. Just slightly melt it. There's the cleats that will hold the light and they just will sit on the upper part of the cabinet like that. Now the great thing with this little cabinet is this little light is in a dimly lit room because it has a motion detector on it and we're not quite dim enough in here um, so I'm going to do it on, turn it on manually and you can see that it lights up the little um, display, uh, but it only stays on for 15 seconds, so if you move away after 15 seconds, it turns off. Hi Roy, good to How's see you. Going, Colin? Good, I got your case already. Wow. And uh, it's got, there's a little, just a little hook on the side, no, nothing to distract from the, and inside there's the light, Very and nice. the light, it's too bright in here, but that light, when it gets dark enough, like in a uh, a dimly lit room, that little light will go on and it illuminates the the uh, the transistor 80s in there, so it'll, it'll, it should look really good for you. But you know, we'd really love to go and see your collection. Can we do that? We can do that. All yep. right, all right, Sounds let's good. go. Okay. Roy, this is quite the collection of radios. How, how many do you have here? 
Oh, well, there's about 35, I guess. Wow. Uh, I've narrowed it down from, I used to have a lot more, but I'm just down to my favorites now. Oh, okay. So Interesting. They don't how, take up much room. So. Yeah, no, they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah. How long have you been collecting transistor radios? Transistors, about 20 years. Holy smokes. Yeah. There's some pretty cool ones here. The little rocket ship, I love that one. Yeah. Those are the crystal radios that oh, yeah. kids used to have. And, yeah. Uh, most of them are Japanese. A few American ones here. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, uh, that's pretty super. Thanks for letting us in here. No problem. Okay, thanks, Anytime. Roy. Thank you. All right. Well, and that concludes our video. I don't even have the box to show you because it's been delivered, uh, and it's probably full of uh, transistor radios even as we speak. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, we ask you to do that. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, all those good things. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.